So another thing that influences our daily rituals is love and specifically how we show love uh, to the people that we love. And uh, so our topic for today is the five love languages. The theory here being basically that if love is the free choice to give of yourself to someone or something, that there are different ways you can do this. And obviously there are infinite ways of doing this. Um, there's, n there's one way of showing love, there are many. Uh, so credit needs to go to Gary Chapman here. He wrote a book called The Five Love Languages, which basically in this book, he just takes all of these infinite ways that you can show love and condenses them into five simple categories. And we are going to talk about those categories today, which are, words of affirmation, acts of service, quality time, physical touch, and gifts. Um, we're going to take each of those on its own and just talk about what, what it means and what it looks like. To be honest, this topic is very, very simple. Um, it, there's nothing really complex here. There's not going to be any real head scratching moments where you're going to look at any of this and say like, oh, I don't get it. In fact, just looking at these the titles for these different categories kind of gives away what what they're all about as we go through this think about what your love language what your primary love language is how do you how do you like to give love or show love to other people and how do you prefer to receive love um, because just like the four sources of belief that we talked about last class the five love languages can really impact the way that you interact with other people and sometimes the way that you miscommunicate with people if you're trying to show love to someone who doesn't speak the same love language as you, uh, you may run into, into trouble. So we're going to start with words of affirmation because honestly, this is the simplest one and it's just literally words. Say it. Say, I love you. That is a word of affirmation. You are communicating love literally with your words. Um, of course, it doesn't just have to be I love you. That's the simplest version. There's uh, many things, that, but it's just saying like, I'm proud of you. You're talented. You did so great in that play. Um, you know, that soccer game, I could tell you really gave it your all. You, you, you're expressing, you're expressing your love through words, um, outwardly. And for someone who speaks this language, uh, love language, the words of affirmation, um, hearing the words is maybe even more important to them than, um, than actions. There's this old, um, you know, this old adage that actions speak louder than words. That's not actually always true. It kind of depends on the person. Some people just like to hear it. Um, so yeah, it's nice if you do things for people, but it's for some people, they also want to hear you say that, um, that you love them. Uh, so our next one is acts of service. This is kind of the flip side of that coin. So if words of affirmation is all about hearing it and speaking it out loud, acts of service is kind of the opposite. It's doing something rather than talking about it. Uh, this can be really anything. It's just doing a service for the person that you love. So driving them to the airport, uh, you could take out the garbage, you could make someone coffee in the morning. It's just like anything you could do to, um, to, to show that you love this person. Uh, for the acts of service language, actions do speak louder than words. So if someone is, is an acts of service uh, communicator, they are not, they don't really care that much if you say, hey, I love you. They're gonna be like, okay, that's nice. What are you gonna do to show it, right? So I'm not, I'm not looking for love to ex be expressed verbally. I'm looking for love to be expressed through service. Uh, so don't tell me that you love me, show me that you love me. Now, right away, we've only covered two of the five love languages and you can already see how there's gonna be a conflict. For instance, um, if I am an acts of service person and my wife is a words of affirmation person, by the way, this is an example, we don't actually use these love languages, but um, if I'm acts of service and my wife is words of affirmation, the way I'm going to try to show my wife that I love her is by uh, cleaning up the house or going the extra mile to like do the dishes or mow the lawn or do, I'm going to look for things to do around the house. And by doing these things, I think that I'm communicating to her that I love her. On the other hand, what is my wife looking for? She's a words of affirmation person. So she sees me doing all these things, but all she's wondering is, well, when is he going to tell me that he loves me? Or when is he going to say something or give me a compliment? And so you have this miscommunication where uh, we are both trying to show love to each other, but because we're quote unquote air quotes here, speaking different languages, we run into this issue of uh, miscommunication of love. We're trying to show love, but it, we may be, you know, sort of, um, passing like ships in the night. And I don't mean to pick on just these two, but it's a great example of how love can be miscommunicated between two people who do really love each other and they just don't quite 
share love on the same wavelength of uh, love language. But any of these can run into the same problem. So up next is quality time. Again, just like you would assume, for someone who speaks the language of quality time, they see time as the most important gift that you can give someone or be given uh, to yourself. Uh, they just want to take time. Um, the the approach here is that there doesn't need to be words. There doesn't even need to be actions. It's literally just being in each other's presence. So a quality time person is going to um, to show love, just spend time, just say, hey, let, do you want to come over and hang out? We can scrapbook, You could. we could watch Netflix, but it doesn't really matter. Remember, the actions here don't actually matter that much. Um, so what you're doing doesn't matter. It's just literally that you're spending time with the person. That's all that matters. So that's quality time. Uh, physical touch. For physical touch, uh, you've got any sort of physical signs of affection, so that could be hugging, kissing, whatever. Um, the, the theory here being that physical intimacy affirms love and affection more than any other words or actions. So for somebody who's a physical touch, uh, uses physical touch as their love language, um, they don't want to, they don't want to see actions, they don't want to hear words, they, it's all about, uh, hugging, touching, whatever. Um, and I think we all have that family member that's maybe just like always needs a hug. And but to someone like me, who obviously isn't a physical touch person, that's a little bit, a little bit much, a little bit get out of my personal space, but, um, different, different people obviously speak different love languages. So for some people, their love language is like, oh, I, you know, I need a hug. And the last one is GIFs, and I, whenever I say that word, I sound like I'm kind of saying the GIF acronym, GIFs. Uh, and ironically enough, I think GIFs, the you know these little moving images um, that show up in memes or in text messages, they, they actually do kind of play into this a little bit more than you might think. So I think that GIFs can sound the most, of the five love languages, I think it it can sound the most selfish, if you follow me. Uh, the idea that it's like, oh, I want you to buy me stuff, right? Like, I want you to get me a gift. Um, and it can be buying, buying gifts for each other. But I want to emphasize here the purpose of this love language. It's not about things. It's not about material possessions. The theory behind gifts as a love language is that um, it, actions, words, quality time, physical touch, all of these other love languages happen when you're with the person. Gifts is the one language, the love language, one love language where you are showing your love and affection for the person when you're not with them. So if you buy someone a gift, what you're communicating to that person is that when you weren't together, when you were separated, you were still thinking about them to the point that you got them something um, or, or sh showed your affection in a way from a distance. Now, obviously this happens at birthdays and Christmas when you literally have like a wrapped present that you give to the person to unwrap, but it doesn't have to be that complicated because it can, it can also be things like just sending a text message, a funny picture, a GIF, a GIF, um, is sending flowers. All of these technically fall into that love language because it's not about getting a physical thing. It's just knowing that when you're away, you're still thinking of me. Uh, so, you know, you're, you're off doing things from this, this person and you want to, you know, show them that you love them. You might text them just anything, just like, Hey, what's up? Or like, Hey, look at this funny picture I saw on the internet. Here's a meme. Um, those all technically fall into this love language because it's all about showing that love from a distance. Uh, yeah, there you go. This made me think of you. Um, so you're out at the mall and you buy them a cookie, you know, it's cause it's like, Oh, I was at the mall. I saw this cookie. I thought of you. I bought it for you. That is, uh, to some people, a really big deal. Um, before I move on to the, the last thing for the day, I just wanted to, to speaking of funny pictures from the internet, I found this on the internet and I thought it was funny. Um, it's the five love languages as applied to tacos. Uh, so words of affirmation, your tacos are delicious. Acts of service, I made you some tacos. Receiving gifts, Here, here's a taco. Quality time. Let's go out for tacos. Physical touch, let me hold you like a taco. Borderline inappropriate, let's move on. What's interesting, I think, is that the, the five love languages, as we've discussed today, 
um, are generally applied to people showing love to other people. And that's the easiest way to cover this concept. But as we move into religious rituals, what part of your brain might now be going like, why are we talking about, you know, watching Netflix and hanging out with my best friend as a way to show her that I love her? Um, that what does that have to do with religious rituals because we've been talking about religious rituals the way this factors in is that actually if you think about your relationship with god as a relationship of love where god is showing love to you and you are showing love to god the five love languages still here carry over so let's take a look at what that looks like in religious rituals whoops words of affirmation um if we're trying to tell God that we love God, um, you've got prayer, you've got music, you've got journaling. Uh, and then, of course, we when we go to church, we hear things like homilies and sermons and we hear the reading of scripture. And this is this is these are words that are communicated from us or or to us from God. Uh, everything we do at worship services it involves words, both giving God praises, uh, you know, words of praise and affirmation and also hearing words from God of praise and affirmation quality time. Um, there are different forms that this can take depending on your preference, but you have like meditation or going to adoration in the, in the chapel, uh, taking time just to yourself to be maybe even in nature and to, and to think about, uh, all the things that God has done for you. Uh, but these are longstanding, lots of religious traditions have things like meditation where you're literally just spending time, uh, in the presence of God gifts um obviously there's a lot of ways we can give gifts and in the context of like a you know going to church or being part of a religious community uh generally we break this down into the three t's time talent and treasure uh the idea being that you can you know donate your time by um you know serving at your church you can give your talent by maybe playing an instrument at your church and of course then there's treasure like you can literally give money um, but there's lots of ways that we give gifts to God. And of course, the gifts that God gives back to us are going to be so varied that I don't even really want to go into examples here. But I'm sure we can all think of examples of gifts God has given to us. Acts of service. Um, it might seem a little bit more complicated at first, but the basic theory here being that God calls us to community. So when we serve other people, we are serving God. So literally, uh, when you do service work, you go to a soup kitchen or you help you know, build houses for homeless people, or even something as simple as just being there for a friend. If you're serving another person, you're serving God. That's acts of service. Lastly, physical touch. This one, you may think, oh, this is a total stumper. There's no way there's physical touch here because God's a spiritual being. Jesus maybe wasn't, but Jesus isn't around so much anymore. How do we have physical touch between us and God? And the answer is this thing that we call sacraments. In fact, the purpose of sacraments is to present a physical aspect of the spiritual reality. So when we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper, the Eucharist or communion, whatever you call it, that's a physical interaction between you and the divine God. When you consume the bread and wine at church, you are literally in a physical way uh, consuming God, being closer in touch with God. And then of course you have like things like baptism. Um, the water doesn't really seem to play an important physical role but all of these all of these uh, if you look at any sacrament you will notice there are strong physical components uh, that both represent spiritual truths but also help us physically feel more in touch with what's going on and then uh, um, I have the word here sacramental a sacramental is any physical object that we use to help us think about things that are not physical so, for instance, um, there's the person who they're holding uh, the rosary. So any form of prayer beads, whether it's a rosary or another version of, um, you know, like novena or devotional, uh, you could have a cross maybe that you use to pray with. You could have a, like a bracelet or a ring or some form of jewelry that helps to remind you to be thinking about God. All of those are called sacramentals because they, they direct our attention to things that are holy. Um, but all of these can be... Uh, classified as physical touch because we're using these physical things to remind us of what is important and that is the end of our class for today that is the five love languages and how the five love languages are important components in religious rituals